I think the the idea to start photographing Lars started about uh, two years ago, quite soon after I met him. Um, I, I met him in Germany, and, and um, I, I, I really remember the first time I saw him already, he, he, he struck me, he, he caught my attention. Uh, he didn't look like, a, like an everyday normal type of guy, to say it like that. Uh, he... I mean, the first time I met him, he kind of looked like a bird. He was he was wearing this red sweater that was too big, and and under his shoulders was 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 it was really weirdly shaped, so that under his shoulders he had this, this almost these wings. And he was he had this boombox with him, and and his hair was was uh, was weirdly cut, and I I mean he didn't look like anything that I had ever seen before. And, and of course that c catches your attention. Uh, quite quickly, I got to know I, I got to know Lars better, and we we would kind of grow towards each other, and and, 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 and I, a friendship started to kind of develop between us. But there was always still some type of distance. We would talk about a lot of things, and we we, we would basically talk about every everything there was to talk about. Uh, I don't know if I've ever talked with someone this much as with him. But there was still some type of distance. There was still something that I didn't understand about Lars. And, and that is what kept me being fascinated. And, and that is, I think, where I first started developing the idea to photograph him. So, and so um, I asked him at the time, but he refused. And, uh, I think he was afraid that I would abuse him. He just didn't trust me enough. But then, about a year later, uh, in the summer, he—that uh, was after I went to Rietveld, and, and 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 Lars was, but also by chance ended up to be in the same class as me. So, and we we grew, we got to know each other even better after this. Uh, and and I think, I kind of let go of this idea to photograph him, but then unexpectedly the, the, the next year he he was going to Norway uh, which is where he's from and he, he asked me if I wanted to come and visit him there and he asked me if I could bring my camera and if I was inter still interested in, in, in photographing him if I wanted to document his life there and uh, yeah I went but uh, I landed in Oslo, and Lars picked me up from the airport, and he, he he took me to his house, and he lives in this quite normal uh, Norwegian house in a, in a normal suburb outside of Oslo, um, and uh, we would spend the first few weeks. We would spend kind of there around his house, going to Oslo, um, just hanging out, but. I, I I quickly started to feel that he wasn't so comfortable there. He he was getting he was getting a bit restless. And um, and and soon he decided also to to uh, go on a road trip with me. And we we took his dad's car and uh, we just left. And then I think I I was basically spending about two weeks with him in a car, uh, driving through Norway. One of the places Lars took me to was this burned down forest. And he was basically spending about, uh, I don't know, I think we spent about five hours there. Uh, he was absolutely fascinated with the place. He was walking around and, 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 and uh, he was picking up objects, feeling the ground. Just Sometimes he would just sit somewhere for 20 minutes, half an hour and... He, he he was utterly amazed by this 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 desolate landscape I think and the the destruction of it and um, and on this moment was that was the first time that I felt that Lars maybe started to doubt about this thing that he took me along he started. I started to feel like a burden for him, and, and, and 
there grew more of a distance between us and uh, yeah he would distance himself from me and, and sometimes he would just walk away and I, w I wouldn't know where he was for, for, for hours. I would just be sitting around in the car and, and minding my own business. And I think he, he he got really skeptic to it and, he, and maybe he got annoyed by, by being followed by a camera the whole time. It, it wasn't easy. Then one one uh, morning we were we were uh, we were constantly driving and he was actually going to this uh, to 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 these really high mountains up in the fjords. Um, and we passed this uh, this really small village in uh, in the really early in the morning. And uh, it was it was raining a bit and there was this graveyard. And. Uh, we got out of the car and uh, I asked Lars to, to stand in front of this fence of the graveyard. And then uh, he did it and I took a photograph of him. But then he took out his smoke bomb and, and threw it in the bush next to him. And at the time I thought he did it because he because he he wanted to fuck me up. He wanted to fuck up my photograph. But he didn't he didn't want to be this posing guy. He, 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 but afterwards, I don't know, I, I got a, quite of a nice shot out of it. And then one night we were, we were really high up in the mountains and it was getting dark and we decided to, to uh, sleep in the car. And uh, he woke me up when the sun was coming up. And we were we were sitting. We were the car was standing next to this lake, and there were some small boats lying in in, in this lake because there were some cottages around this lake. And uh, Lars woke me up and asked me if I wanted to film him. And he took one of these boats and started pedaling over the water. And uh, and then he while he was half through, he he fired up the smoke bomb. And I was able to take some amazing shots of it. A year later, I, uh, I decided to print the photographs I took of Lars, some of them uh, that I took of him in, in Norway, and, um, and print them out, uh, quite big sized. Uh, to to see what it would look like, to see if, if if I would get the effect that I wanted, and um, I was working really hard on it, um, scanning them in, uh, color correcting them, uh, printing them in a professional uh, professional shop, and I remember getting the prints, and I there was something that didn't quite come across for me. I, I didn't feel when I saw the results, when I saw these big photographs that I had captured Lars, that I had captured who he was. I felt the prints were too, they were too clean, too aesthetic, too beautiful, too, it wasn't, I didn't, do, didn't have anything to do with Lars. I felt that I failed as a photographer. And for a moment, I, I, I was a bit in a crisis and I thought that I was just going to drop them. But then I had the idea, why don't I just give some of these prints to Lars? And uh, and that's what I ended up doing. I, I, I gave him a call and I, I asked him if he, he, he would be interested in, in having some of these photographs for some time. And uh, I told him that he could basically just do what he wanted to do with them, but that I felt I wasn't I wasn't pleased and happy, and that I f didn't feel it represented him, and that I wanted him to give it more a, a, a feeling of him, that it became more a part of his life. So I he agreed on it, and I I, I uh, went over to his house and I gave him about. Uh, I think eight large photographs 
and uh, that was for a period of three months. And in the meantime, I was continuing with other projects, uh, kind of forgetting about it. But now and then, uh, Lars would send me these uh, small pieces of footage uh, that he was he was basically recording things that he was doing with the prints or that, because I have no idea what was happening. Uh, I was not involved in it, I, I, and it was quite an anxious time. And, uh, I remember I got one film of him where all these pigeons were, were eating from the prints. And then another piece of footage that I received from Lars was this print lying in, in a shower. And then the last thing I received from him were these photographs he mailed me um, all taken at night I think in some party in a, in, 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 in a park that's at least what it looks like and, and uh, the print is just laying around there, there's one photograph of Lars kind of drunk holding it uh, and I, I think it was his way also to to continue this challenge towards me also because for me, even though it was my own intention to to give him this prints, it was still hard to to see uh, your work being destroyed. Definitely, if when you don't know what exactly is happening and you only receive this type of this type of fragmented footage. But then in the end I I picked up my prints and um, yeah, they looked kind of good. <laughs>